Well, good evening and welcome to another broadcast. I'm Daniel Walker, and I'm really excited about what we have to share with you tonight. The sermon series we're on right now is Generational Blessing. And tonight we're going to be talking about the privilege of the blessing. Say that, the privilege of the blessing. That's right, walking in the blessing is a great privilege. And so we're going to look at that tonight. I'm excited about what God has to share with you. So get your pens, get your notepads, get your family, get, let's get in the word. Amen. Let's go. Let's get in the word. Get your Bible in your hand and say this confession with me. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Tonight, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly say, my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I thank you, Father, that I am a hearer and a doer of the word. And after hearing the word, I declare, I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Favor, increase, and promotion are in my life now. Hallelujah. Well, amen. I'm so excited about what we're going to be teaching tonight. Uh, the generational blessing uh, is such a big topic. Uh, the more we, we look at it, uh, just the bigger it gets because there's so much to expound upon. The blessing, the blessing of God. God has blessed us. Amen. And we need to understand what that blessing means. And so that's what we endeavor to do. The series is entitled Generational Blessing. And really what it is is a spinoff from pastor series uh, that he began talking about generational curses. Uh, I believe that we should understand both the blessing and the curse. And the reason for that is, you know, that's how you learn to understand and appreciate the difference, that there is a difference. You know, there's a difference between the blessing and the curse, walking in the blessing and walking under the curse. You know, there's, it's kind of like, uh, if you ever been really hungry before, you know, it's hard to appreciate a good, a good meal. If you've never been hungry, you know, I, I've been hungry to the point where I was hungry. You know, have you ever gotten there before where, where you leave the you and the you turn to, Oh, you're not, you're not even hungry anymore. Now you're hungry. Amen. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And then there's there's some of us, there's some of us, come on, come on, who go from hungry to hangry. Yeah, that's when that's when that the, the hunger meets anger and it turns into to hangriness. Well, you just go off on any anybody, anyone that's around you. Amen. <laughs> We're gonna get you delivered tonight. Just reach your hand toward the screen. Touch Lord. Amen. You're free. Walk in your freedom. Amen. But there is a difference, y'all. There is a difference when you really begin to understand uh, the opposite of a thing. When you understand that there is a such thing as really being hungry, you will appreciate uh, some good food. You know, I remember when we were uh, 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 younger, we would play basketball, my brothers and I. And man, we would play with no thought of eating or drinking any water, anything. I mean, we, we just go outside and we was ready to ball. We watch Michael Jordan come fly with me. You know, uh, we'd watch uh, uh, one of the, one of those types of series. And I'm telling you, we would go outside and we would basketball, we would play basketball as hard as we can flying all over the place. Right. And then the thing about it is when you got finished, all of a sudden thirst would hit you. And I'm talking about thirst. Like you feel like you've been walking in the desert. And so we would go to the backyard and to get some water. And man, you turn on that hose. And if you wasn't careful, you get third degree burns by putting your lips on that hot water. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You had to wait a few seconds. You couldn't just let that, that water, that, that immediate water come out, lest it put you in the hospital. So you had to wait a little while for it to get cooler. 
But I want you to know, even though we used to drink out of there and that water was good to quench our thirst, there was nothing like being able to go inside in the AC and drink some nice, fresh, cold water out the Kentwood machine. Amen. See, until you've been really, really thirsty, it's hard for you to really appreciate uh, uh, a good drink of water, a good cold glass drink of water. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So in the same way, we got to understand that it's 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 good to, to have a knowledge of the curse, but you also got to have a knowledge of the blessing. You got to have a knowledge of the blessing and you also have a knowledge of the curse. You got to have a balance. Amen. Uh, you know, being in Christ, uh, uh, I'll just say this being outside of Christ, you know, it's a curse all by itself. It's a curse all by itself. Yeah, living a life without Christ, without the light of Christ in your life. Yeah, but walking with God, walking with Jesus when you've received him, it's a blessing. And I'm telling you, we're going to talk about that. Uh, like I said, there's so much to it. But we need to understand both. We need to understand the blessing and the curse. Uh, salvation, this is one of those key principles. Salvation is not just being saved from something. It's also being saved to something. Say that. Salvation is not just being saved from something. It's also being saved to something. So, for instance, if a person is drowning and you throw them a life raft, you throw them one of those circle circle float floater things, <laughs> floating devices, forgot the name. <clears throat> They're not just being saved from the water. They're also being saved to the boat or to shore, if that's where you are. They're not just being saved from, they're being saved to. Um, we're not just saved from sin. We're saved to righteousness. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the, from the curse of the law. Being made uh, a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone who hang it on a tree. But that's not all. If we keep reading, we see, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we see here that he has redeemed us from the curse so that the blessing might come. You get that? You see that? He's, he's redeemed us from, so the blessing will come. Hallelujah. So there's certain kingdom principles that we need to understand that if we're going to, uh, uh, if we're going to walk in kingdom promises, there's certain kingdom principles we need to understand if we're going to walk in kingdom promises. Now, that's a message all by itself, but uh, I believe every believer should, should understand what I just said. We are not only saved from, we are saved too. And it is a great privilege. Y'all, the greatest privilege of life, the greatest privilege of life is being called into the kingdom of God. Is being in the kingdom of God. Let me say it that way. Because many are called, few are chosen. Amen. You got to receive. You got to choose to receive. Amen. You've been called into the kingdom of God, but when you choose and you live a life in the kingdom of God, it is the greatest privilege of life. The second greatest privilege, or I'll say of equal of equal greatness, is understanding and recognizing what it means to be in the kingdom. You know, it's one thing to be blessed. It's another thing to understand what the blessing means. It's a whole nother level. You know, it's one thing to be an heir. It's a whole nother thing to walk in an in inheritance. And so that's what we endeavor to do with this series. We, I want to see, we want to see more people walking in the privileges, walking in the blessings, walking in the abundance, walking in the favor, walking in the healing that God has provided for us. That's the purpose of this. It's a great privilege, a great privilege to be in the kingdom. Now, what does that word mean, privilege? What does that word mean? The definition of it is, it's a special right, an advantage, an immunity granted or available only to a particular person or group. Only to a particular person 
or a group. The blessing, y'all, is not for everyone. It's for a particular group. If it, were, if it were for everyone, it wouldn't be special. Think about it like this. You know, if Lisa asked me, do I love her? And I, and I responded by saying, Lisa, I love everybody. What do you think? How do you think she would respond to that? How, you, how would you think she would like that? <laughs> you think she's going to be happy with that? I don't think so. I think that once I wake up from my coma, you know, you know, I think I would have a better answer for her after that. After she done knocked me out. Amen. <laughs> no, it's got to be special. It's got to be a privilege. It can't just be, yeah, well, you know, I love everybody. No, it's a privilege. It's a very, it's a, it's a special thing. No, you're the chosen one. Well, guess what? You're the chosen one. You're the one that God has called. You're the one he has set his love, his affection on. It's a great privilege to be in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. There's a song, you know this song. When Jesus is my, my portion. Is it, is it portion or is it potion? Because when I was a kid, I used to always say potion. I think it's portion. Amen. Amen. A constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Yeah. If his, he's, you are special to him. He is, he's got his eyes on you. He never looks away from you. You've got his attention. You remember what we said Sunday? He's got his, he's got his eyes on you. You have his fullest attention. Boy, that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. It is a great privilege, I'm going to say it again, to be in the kingdom of God, to be in the family of God. You have a seat at the table. Say that. Say, I have a seat at the table. But you got to understand your privilege. You know, a lot is said right now about white privilege and whether or not that exists or not. And, you know, there's people, one, you know, the left and the right, they, they debate whether or not it's a real thing. I'm going I'm to tell you like this, you know, 90% of the people that's watching me right now, you're all right handed. Well, I'm left handed and I want you to know something. You have right privilege. Yeah, that's what I said. Right privilege. In other words, the whole system of the world, it's a little side note, but the whole system of the world has been built around you. Yeah, think about it. Desks in college. Man, I couldn't stand writing on those desks. Why? Because they're all built for right-handed people. Notebooks. Yeah, you know how hard it is as a left-hander to write with a notebook where the spirals on one side and your hand is all cramped up, getting all kind of impressions and indentures in it? Yeah, that's no fun. Binders. That's just torture. Trying to write in a binder for a left-hander is torture. But it's not just that. Just go to the bank. You'll see the pen is on the right hand side. The 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 um, if you go and swipe your card at the store it's on the right hand side. Everything is built for the right handers. Can openers, measuring tape. So much more. So you have right privilege. That's right. <laughs> it's a thing. So I'll say, yeah, white privilege. Yeah, it's probably a thing. Yeah. But here's here's a greater thing. Kingdom privilege. Yeah. Kingdom privilege. See, the question you have to ask yourself is, am I going to let these things stop me? One of the things I'll say, I think pastor did such a great job in raising us and teaching us. We, we never acknowledge that we, we could, we can see that things are, that they exist, but just because they exist, we doesn't mean you have to let it stop you. Just because it's a thing doesn't mean you have to let it hold you back. And I believe that they did such a great job with, with us. Um, my siblings and I have not, it doesn't bother us. It doesn't bother me. I know it don't bother me at all. It is what it is. Why? Because I have kingdom privilege and kingdom privilege is greater than any privilege on earth. Somebody say amen to that. Kingdom privilege is greater than any other privilege there is. No privilege, not white privilege, not, not right privilege, not no kind of privilege can stop kingdom privilege. So don't you fall for the hype. Don't you fall for the hype. 
Nobody and nothing can stop the favor of God. But you got to think like that. And you got to know that. And you got to live like that. Yeah. You, you, so, you know, you, it, the question is, what you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? What's the use of knowing something? Oh, it exists. So? It's not holding you back. Can't nobody hold you back. You've got the favor of God on your life. You've got the blessing of God on your life. Nothing can hold you back. See, see what I'm talking right now is some high level stuff. This is, this is high level. Because the world would have you to believe you're being held back. But you are not being held back. Selah. Pause and think like Pause and think on it. Amen. I'm going to say it again. It is a great privilege to be in the kingdom of God. It's an honor to be in the kingdom of God. Now, let's look at the word. Go in your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter 2 verse 1. I'm going to read out of the ESV version. It says, so put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. And like newborn infants, long for this pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. You hear that? By it, by what? This pure spiritual milk. When you are receiving from the word of God. You remember a couple of weeks ago we talked about El Shaddai. That, that, that one of the names of God was El Shaddai, is El Shaddai. He's the God that supplies like a mother supplies milk for a newborn baby. I told you about Ethan, how, how he was thirsty. He was always thirsty for that milk. And I said that we should be the same way. We should be thirsty. We should be hungry for the word, hungry for spiritual milk. Why? So we can grow. So we can grow. We can grow in this salvation. See, it's a privilege, but you got to understand the privilege. The way you come to understand the privilege is by hearing the word. You get faith for what we're saying. You come into the kingdom, but then that's not all. Yeah, you got saved. Now what? Now you got to find out. Now you have to grow up. And the way you grow up is by feeding on spiritual milk. The word that I'm speaking to you right now is spiritual milk. It's It'll cause you to grow up if you'll let it. Amen. Yeah. Somebody say amen to that. And, and you know, while I'm here, let me say this. Let me say this. You know, you know, there's, let me, let me, let me, I don't want to step on, on too many toes. I know I'm going to step on your toes, but I won't step too hard on your toes. You know, there's no reason right now to miss service. Come on, somebody say amen. Especially on a Sunday morning. How are you going to miss a Sunday morning service when all you got to do is roll over, wipe the crust out your eyes, and, and, and log in? Come on now. You got to be hungry. You got to be thirsty. You got to want this. Yeah, you got to go after it. You got to go after the word. You got to want to grow. You got to want to understand your rights and your privileges in the kingdom of God. So I'm encouraging you. Make sure you're on every live stream. Make sure. God called you here for a reason. You're connected here for a reason. There's something that you're supposed to be getting. You're here for a reason. And it's a great privilege. But it's about your perception. It's about you having fresh eyes and being able to see and perceive what God has for you. It's so much, y'all. It's so much. It's so much. You got to be hungry. You got to be thirsty. They that hunger and thirst for righteousness, the Bible says, shall be filled. And write this down. In the kingdom, you only get as much as you are hungry for. Let me say that again. In the kingdom, you only get as much as you are hungry for. Selah. Pause and think on that. Now, let's keep going. First Peter, first uh, chapter two, verse three says, if indeed, well, let me read two and then roll into three. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that it, that by it, you may grow up into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. You see that? So if you know that the Lord has been good, well, let me ask you this first. Has the Lord been good to you? 
Come on. Has he? If the Lord's been good to you, what he's saying is, if if the if you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, then you should you should want more. Again, I go back to Ethan. See, he tasted that milk. He knew it was good. So what did he want? He went back for more. When you see the goodness of God, when you see the good and recognize, that's the key, y'all. It's, rec it's recognition. You have to recognize it. You have to acknowledge it. The goodness of God in your life. Has he been good to you? He's been good to me. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, he's been good to me. He, God's been so good to me. Y'all, we need a we need to have a Zoom call as a testimony service. Because you know, everything I, you know, I can't, we can't share all this on 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 the, the interwebs. You know, uh, y'all gotta in order to understand my glory, you got the, the glory, you gotta understand the story. And so many of, of us at the whole family church, y'all know we are big on telling our testimony. And I'm telling you, you many of you have seen uh, the path that we've taken, Lisa and I have taken. We are big time givers. We are sowers in the kingdom of God. We are uh, those who believe in seed time and harvest. And I'm telling you, I believe in seed time and harvest time. And I'm seeing seed time and I'm seeing harvest time. And so we have some, some awesome, this is a little side note. We have some awesome testimonies that we want to share and so uh, we got to get together, y'all. We got to make this happen. We got to get a Zoom call going so we can share. And I'm, I'm sure, because I've heard already multiple testimonies from people who are also members of the, of, the, of the whole family church who have some, I mean, wonderful, wonderful testimonies of things that God's doing right now. We are all tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. And so we want to get together uh, and share that. Uh, I think it's a good idea. We're going to have to ask Pastor, see what he says. Amen. Uh, but I think it's a, it would be a great idea for us to get together and do a Zoom call all together where we can share the goodness, the testimonies, the things that we know God is doing. Amen. Now, back to the, back to the sermon, back to the lesson. He says, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. And I ask you, has God been good to you? If he's been good to you, then you should want more, more of him. You should want more of him. You should want to know him more. You should want to spend more time with him. You should want to praise him more. You should want to pray more. You should want to worship more. You should want to be on these live streams more. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. All you need is one word from God. You know why I push you like that? Because... All you need is one word, one. So every time, let me tell you what I do. If I go to a service, if I listen uh, to something online, um, if I go to a revival, if I go to church, whenever I'm listening for to the word of God, I'm listening for a word from God to me. Yes, I'm growing by all of the word that's being taught. But I'm listening for something specific that God's going to say to me. Why? One word. Change your life forever. Change will change your life forever. So that's why I'm saying you. So being hungry and being thirsty, when you've tasted and seen that God is good, man, you got to want to you got to want to be be on before the, 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 the call starts, before the live stream begins. You should want to be on prayer, our prayer calls. You should be on the live stream from from start to finish. Come on now, some of you are logging in for 15 minutes and logging off. Yeah, we see it. We see the statistics. We see the analytics. <laughs> Amen. But I'm telling you, I'm listen, listen, it's for your good. What I'm saying is for your good. It's for your good. It's so you can grow. I'm telling you, God, it's a great privilege to be in the kingdom. But you it, but it's this word, it's doing what we're doing right now. This is how you come to understand the privilege of being in the kingdom, the benefit of being in the kingdom. Amen. Let's keep going. Verse four. As you come to him, him being Jesus, a living stone rejected by men, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. Jesus just like in his day, Jesus was rejected. Jesus is still being rejected now 
in our day, in our day, in our time. Uh, he, he, he's still being rejected. Um, you know, people are living life like, oh, I don't need a savior. I don't, you know, I don't need, I don't need Jesus. I don't need church. I don't need, I don't need that. Are you out of your mind? Do you not realize that this world is temporary? That this is not all there is? That there is an eternal life or death after this? Most people are not, they don't, they, they, we're not walking because they're so distracted by everything that's going on. All this temporary stuff that's going on. Oh, what about the coronavirus? Oh, what about the election? Oh, what about this? Oh, what about my job? Oh, all these things are temporary things. Let that simmer in your spirit. Let it sizzle. Amen. They, they're temporary. They're subject to change. Yeah, there is a greater, there is a bigger plan that you got to make sure that you are a part of. Now, God's called you to it. It's his plan. He has a plan for your life. But you're not going to walk in, walk in that plan if you're walking in carnality. If you're walking, thinking like a mere man, thinking like a regular person. You've got to get the mind of God. Look at what he says. He said, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God. In other words, God's got, the way God sees him is chosen and precious. The way you see God, the way you see the kingdom should be chosen. It should be precious to you. I, Lord, I need you. Let me tell you, I need God every day. Every day, my Lord, I need him. He's, he's chosen. He's precious to me. See, I want to see, I want to see what the way God sees. Fresh eyes. I want to see the way he sees. The way God sees, let me tell you, none of this stuff is bothering him. All these things that we are worried about, concerned, is temporary, subject to change. He's not worried about it. Now, I'm not saying that he's not concerned about it. I'm not saying he's not concerned about everything that's happening. Don't get me wrong. Don't misquote me. But what I'm telling you is, this is not everything. Some people, you cannot hang your hat on this and, and just give up on life or just feel like this is all there is to life. There is a bigger plan at work. A kingdom plan. Yeah. There's strategies the enemy has. But guess what? There's a much bigger strategy that God has. I want to be on his timeline. I want to be uh, where he is. I want to be thinking like he's thinking, speaking like he's speaking, talking like he's talking. Hallelujah. Amen. He is chosen and precious. Verse five says, you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So listen to verse seven. So the honor is for you who believe. Who's the honor for? Those that believe. It's an honor to believe. It's a privilege to be a believer. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Y'all, it's an honor to believe on Jesus. It's an honor to walk by faith and to live a life where you are trusting in him. It's an honor. It's a great privilege. And you should count it such. Amen. Verse 8 says, And a stumbling stone, a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. Y'all, the world is offended by Jesus. Yeah, they're offended when you say there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. They don't like that. No, they want, they want, they want all, you know, no, there's many ways to God. Oh, there's all these ways, yeah. No, there's one way, Jesus Christ. And so it's an offensive thing. It's an offensive thing for you to say that Jesus, you know, he, he offends the world. He offends that worldly thought. So don't be surprised when you offend them. Don't be surprised. Don't be afraid when you offend them. Who is them? Those that don't believe. 
And when you say what you believe, you know, now it's a thing. Now, people, it's so funny to me that people uh, from every, all these religions and what have you, everybody can, can talk about what they believe. But boy, when you're a Christian and you, you believe on Jesus, man, all of a sudden people have a problem. People can talk about new age, science, uh, what is it, the, the Scientology, uh, Buddhism, Muslims. You can say, people can say all kinds of things. When you say that Jesus is Lord, people get offended. People get mad. But y'all, we can't worry about people. When you know, when you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, you got to share that. When you know that it, when you're walking in kingdom privilege, you got to share that with somebody. You can't hold that in. It's hard, man. I'm telling you. God, God's doing so much in my life. I, I got to tell you. I got to say something. How I'm going to take credit for it? See, that's what happens. If not, it's, it's, oh yeah, I'm so great. I'm so wonderful. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm telling you I'm not. It's all him. It's all him. And so when it's like that, you want to tell somebody. It's like a good restaurant. When you find a good restaurant, what you do? You tell somebody. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Y'all, the greatest privilege of my life is that I'm in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That It's a great blessing. And I, I'm passing that blessing on. I, I, my, my wife is blessed. She's in the kingdom of God. My children are blessed. They are in the kingdom of God. My family is blessed. It's a great privilege, y'all. It's a great blessing. You should want that for your family. Now, watch this. Now, he said it's an offense to the world, right? Verse 9. Jesus is an offense. Believing on him is a stumbling block. He says, but you. But you. But you. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Did you hear that? But you, but you, in other words, you are different. That's right. Don't be surprised by that. Don't be, yeah, you're, you are special. You are chosen, he says. You are royal. You are holy. The King James Version says you are peculiar, a peculiar people. <laughs> you ever saw something peculiar? Yeah, when, when Lisa and I went to Thailand, she um, she had me eating. She, she, we went into, um, there was a buffet at the restaurant, and she was like, you should try some of these, these fruits. And I was looking at those fruits. I was like, I ain't never seen nothing like that before. It's some peculiar looking fruit, <laughs> you know. But how many of you know is it, it was delicious? Amen. Uh, some of y'all know about dragon fruit. Yeah, look it up. It's a strange looking fruit, but it's delicious. Amen. But it was that and some other stuff. I was like, oh my goodness. But God calls us peculiar. We are peculiar. You are different. Yeah, you got to be comfortable with that. As a believer, you're going to be a little different. You're going to stand out. You're going to be different. Amen. Glory to God. Your faith in Christ should set you apart. You know, it should make you different because you're not believing like everybody else is believing. You're not in fear like everybody else is in fear right now. At least you shouldn't be. Come on, say amen. Then he says, we've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Did you see that? Called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Out of darkness into salvation is not just saved from something. It's being saved to something. We are called out of darkness into light. Wow. So walk in the light, y'all. Amen. Well, we're going to wrap up. Uh, I guess here's a couple points I want you to remember. Salvation, y'all, is not just being saved from something. It's also being saved to something. The blessing is special. It's a great privilege to be in the kingdom of God. You are different because of him. Walk in that with confidence. And I'm going to conclude here at 1 Peter verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 10. 
He says, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Maybe you're watching tonight and you've not received the mercy of God. You say, well, what is the mercy of God? Y'all, the mercy of God is a person. The person of Jesus Christ. That's right. 2,000 years ago, he came and paid the price. The price for you and me. The price for us to be saved. And if you want to receive him tonight, you can. It's not a difficult thing. <clears throat> Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 says that if you openly declare, openly declare right now, if you just openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you, to come into my life. I ask you to forgive me. Make me new. You said, if anyone call on you, you would in no wise turn them away. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Well, if you prayed that prayer, I'm so happy that you did. Please make a comment. We want to hear from you. You can comment in the comment section. I'm saved. You can text us or call us at 504-345- 8932, or you can email us at prayer at the whole family church.com. Y'all, I'm so excited about what God's doing in your life. It's a great privilege to be in the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, it is. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We declare over you and your family that you are whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. In your life, your whole. Have a great night. Pastor David Walker, and we'd like to give you an opportunity to support the ministry. There are four ways that you can give. You can download the Free Church Center app, find the Whole Family Church, and sow your seed there. You can give online at www.twfcla.com. You can text to give. Simply send a text of any amount to 84321 and follow the instructions. Lastly, you can mail your gift to us. We're located at 3469 Ames Boulevard, Marrero, Louisiana, 70072. Thank you for supporting the ministry of the Whole Family Church. We declare that there's nothing missing, nothing broken in your life. You are whole.